Easy resin casting using TC802 polyurethane casting resin. In this video, I'm going to be pouring up some simple resin casts from a matrix mold made in a previous video. So if you haven't seen that tutorial, definitely check it out. I'll link it on the end screen. And what I'm pouring up here is a very simple casting resin formula that's one to one mix ratio by volume. This is TC802. This is a fast setting resin that is very low viscosity. Now this formula mixes one to one by volume. And remember, because this is a fast setting formula, you wanna move fast, but because it is a very low viscosity, it's easy to get nice bubble free parts without pressure casting. So once I've thoroughly mixed up my resin, which typically only takes about 25 to 30 seconds of thorough mixing, ready to pour that into our mold. Now again, this is a silicone matrix mold I made in a previous tutorial, and the mold was made with TC5110F platinum silicone. And real important to understand the orientation of the mold. The little Venus statue is facing towards me, and what I'm doing here is I'm filling it partially, and her face is that direction there towards me. So what I'm doing is tilting it on its side and then tapping it a little bit to help get any air bubbles that might be trapped in her face to come up to the top. And then once I've done that, then I'm ready to fill up the rest of the mold. But real important to understand the orientation of your part that's inside your mold and make sure any problem areas are either well vented or that you tilt the mold accordingly to help that air come to the surface. Now I'm ready to top off the mold with the rest of the resin and I'll use the remaining resin to gauge when the part is ready to demold. So the rest of that resin, I'm gonna keep that on my workbench here and watch that and this changes to white when it is fully cured. So as soon as that undergoes a complete color change and in the thinnest spot in what's left over in that mixing cup, that's a good indicator that we're ready to demold our part. Typically, you can demold this resin system in about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the cross section. Now, polyurethane resin systems cure the inverse of an air drying system. So the thinnest cross section will cure the last. So I'm using what's left over in the mixing cup to check that. And I leave the stir stick in that batch so I can pull that out and now my mixing cup can be used again. And you see that little drip there on the bottom? When I can peel that up and that's nice and firm, that's a good indicator that I'm ready to demold my part. Now in order to minimize the cleanup work on my finished part, I made this a seamless mold. Now that's not always practical, but for this uh, little Venus statue, it worked out beautifully. So this is a 5110F platinum silicone mold with a BR75D mother mold. And again, I'll link the tutorial on how I made this matrix mold on the end screen, so be sure to check that out. Now that combination of materials, the TC5110F and the BR75D just make for a great production mold. And of course that matrix process allows this to be remade anytime we wear out a mold and need another one for production. So now we're gonna turn that mold inside out and remove our first cast copy. And you see we got a nice bubble free copy in TC802 casting resin. Now I didn't use any mold release for casting this part, but if I did, I would want to use a paintable mold release like E302. E302 is what's called a paintable mold release, which has minimal residue, which is easy to clean off cast parts. Now we're gonna come back to this resin cast here in just a minute, but for now we're going to reassemble the mold and cast another one. So you see how easy it is to reorient that to silicone mold inside that mother mold? and put our hardware back in and we're ready to cast another copy. Now this second copy, I'm going to cast adding some green pigment. Now this particular system, again, this is more of the TC802 and I'm going to be adding the green pigment to the B side. And the reason for that is because this is such a fast setting system, I don't wanna add this to both components or that I'll waste valuable time getting that pigment suspended in the resin. So I wanna first mix that into my part B and then I'll add my part A. Remember, the system doesn't start reacting until you add that part A and then you can't go back. So be aware of that and be ready to move fast. So now that we have our pigment stirred in, now we just have to mix the two parts together 
and that's relatively fast to get those mixed up and poured into our mold. And remember that every mold is different. When you're hand casting parts like this into silicone molds, every figurine, every part, every little electronic enclosure, whatever part that you're making is going to have its own little idiosyncrasies. So real important to make sure you learn the mold and understand where the parts are that might trap air bubbles. And this particular part, the face, is where I wanna be really careful because the little Venus nose comes to kind of a point there. So I'm gonna jostle the mold around a little bit, make sure I know where her little face is and jostle it around, make sure any air bubbles come to the surface and then fill it up to the top. And remember that working time goes by fast. You wanna make sure you stay alert and get your resin poured into the mold as soon as possible because polyurethane resins will set up right in the middle of a pour if you're not careful. Now again, here it's a little bit clearer to see when it undergoes that color change, you can see it turning color. And because that green pigment is added to a material that will turn white, we wind up with kind of a pastel color. And that's exactly what I'm shooting for. I'm actually trying to simulate the look of oxidized copper by adding that green pigment. So this is about 15 minutes later, we're ready to demold our part. And again, you wanna be mindful that uh, the thinnest cross section will cure last. So if you're casting a figurine like this, that might have some little thin areas like fingers or toes that are thinner than the base, you wanna make sure you give it plenty of time for those areas to cure completely before you start demolding your part. Now here's our second cast from the mold. And I had help from my lovely wife here demolding. And now ready for some quick finishing. These are very simple finishing techniques. Those of you new to this process, these are some very simple techniques you can use to get some nice looking results. And what I'm doing here is just dry brushing a little bit of Copper B from Sculpt Nouveau over the top. Now I did not use mold release for this part, so I don't need to wash off any release residue. And I don't have to worry about the resin not accepting paint. Now again, this is a very simple finish and I'm sure you will get much better results than this caveman thought out by your scientists, but I'm just dry brushing some copper B over the high points of the sculpture and using that green color to simulate the look of oxidized copper. Now for the sake of the video, I'm gonna keep this pretty straightforward and simple, but if you wanted to follow this up with additional colors, uh, additional metallic colors or anything like that, you could. Sometimes I also seal that with a clear sealer. But I wanted to go ahead and move on to our other just plain white cast. Now, I'm never happy with just a plain white resin cast. So what I'm doing here is applying some of the Sculpt Nouveau brown wax all over the piece. And what I'm doing is stippling that on all over the piece. And then almost as soon as I've applied that all, before it has a chance to dry, I'm going to use some clean paper towels to pull back that wax. And you want to do that fast because this particular wax, this will dry and cure and really grab onto the surface of the part, uh, which is great for longevity. But in this stage, if we don't uh, wipe off the excess wax right now, it will be almost impossible to remove later. So we want to really quick follow that up with wiping off any of that excess wax. And what happens is the leftover wax gives us kind of an antiquing look and gets us that look of old antique stone. So we're just gonna wipe away that excess wax and there we have our finished sculpture. And again, if we wanted to follow this up with some clear wax or any other uh, wax finishes over the top, we could do that at this point. But there you have a very simple finish on both a pigmented resin copy as well as just a plain TC802 resin cast. So there you have some simple resin casting techniques using our brand new matrix mold we made in previous tutorial. So be sure to check those out on the end screen. And as always, all of the materials I used in this video will be linked in the video description. So be sure to check those out. And if you haven't already, be sure to like the video. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. And of course, check around the channel for other content related to mold making, casting, and finishing techniques. Thanks for watching and thanks for supporting the channel.